Greetings comic book fans, I'm Jason and welcome to my comic book reviews. Big week this week, we've got over 20 books to get through. Um, but first things first, this week I'm going to try and do things by notes. They're more bullet points than notes, but hopefully this will help my reviews. Particularly this big week, be more concise. So we're going to try that out. Also the kind of format is going to change up a little bit. Usually I have all my books jumbled up. We're going to kick things off in a minute with the weekly books from DC. We're then going to have the rest of the DC books followed by our independent books and then at the end we're going to have our Marvel books. That's going to be the structure I'm going to try out for a bit. The idea behind this is that if I've got people that maybe only like Marvel or only like DC or only like Image, they know now they can find the reviews that they want to see how they want to watch them. Um, Please, if they've got a preference, if you like or dislike this format that I'm trying out, please let me know in the comments below. Um, if, if people don't tell me, I can't fix it, you know. So, please, let me know. Uh, it's just something I'm trying out to see if they make the videos any better. Anywho, let's get straight into this. Oh, one last thing. Um, I apologise. This video probably will be a long one. I like to try and keep my videos to about 20 minutes. But with over 20 books, it's going to be difficult to do each book, like you know less than a minute per book that's going to be difficult so this is going to be a long video i apologize in advance uh but as you know when you've got this many books to review it's very difficult to to do a 20 minute video but i will keep it as short as possible so that's enough of me muttering on let's get down to business and as always we're going to kick things off with the two weekly books from dc first up we have batman eternal issue number 26 and this book was a bit of a mixed bag um what we did get that was good was um, the, there's a nice little kind of scene with the Bat family that I really liked. And coming out of this book, I'm really becoming a big fan of Red Robin. And I would love to see a, a Red Robin solo book because I'm really liking his character in here. Uh, there's a great scene between Batman and Julia Pennyworth in the hospital as they go to visit Alfred. And I'm really, again, another character I'm really growing on me. And I'm really starting to like is Julia Pennyworth since she kind of what happened to her dad and she's now kind of got this role where she's helping Batman I really like that dynamic and, and I think I yeah that is working really well for me we also get the Hush uh, origin story which again uh, I really liked I don't know Hush pre New 52 I didn't read the original book yet I, it's on my to-do list but I, if I don't so I don't know how big of a deviation this origin is from the original origin but I really liked his origin here and I, I thought it was a different kind of origin for a villain and I really liked it however what I didn't like was the art uh, this issue especially the beginning how Bruce Wayne is drawn nah didn't like that um, also I found they hurt spoiler this issue because I think they've done a great job introducing Stephanie Brown the spoiler into the book but this issue, she breaks into prison to see her dad, and it didn't ring true for me. Here's this person who was just a regular person who's been using technology and spying on her dad to kind of get out there what he's up to. And, and that's all been very believable. But now she's got this universal key, but not only that, she can disable guards. Like, when did she get all of these skills? Um, that just didn't ring true for me. And I thought it was the first time with the spoiler story that they slightly messed up. Um, also, the other bit I didn't like is we're going back to Arkham. Um, for me, the, the Batman Eternal story, the Arkham Asylum bit with Joker's daughter has been, for me, the least interesting. At least I'm hoping that now it's going to come to a head because it's kind of just been lingering on in the background. Uh, so I'm hoping we're coming to the end of that. But the, so yeah, for me the good and the bad this issue leveled itself out, and I'd give Batman Eternal issue number 26 three stars out of five. Moving on right along now to Future's End issue number 22. Um, despite what the cover suggests, there is no Shazam, uh, the Masked Superman this issue. But what we do get is we get to deal with a lot of the the fallout of what Lois Lane did by revealing the identity of the masked Superman. Um, in particular, interested is Dr. Yamazaki, who he, I'm really curious to where his story is going to go. Because you've got to think all of these stories that we're following in this book are going to link up at some point. So I'm really curious to where his story was. 
uh, it was nice to catch up with some of the stories that we hadn't seen for a bit I thought that was that was really good and like for example we see uh, the former Firestorm Jason and Ron as they individ as individuals now are trying to move on with their lives and and that was really good we also catch up with Frankenstein in space which has been my favorite part of the book so that was really awesome and that leads to a great cliffhanger at the end of the book and a fantastic way to end it um, and I also really like the art this issue I feel the art in this book is much more consistent that they get more artists that are similar so that it doesn't feel like too big of a leap each week um, my only thing I didn't like this issue was the female team of Voodoo, Mercy, Smash and Bash. Um, I, I just don't see where that's going at the moment and I, I found it the least interesting part of the book. Other than that, I feel this is a super consistent book, really enjoying Future's End and I'd give issue number 22 4 stars out of 5. Moving on now to the rest of our DC books and we kick things off with Wonder Woman issue number 34. And... This was a great way to set up the final issue of Azarello's run. Uh, all the stories kind of feel, all the arcs, I feel like they're coming to their conclusion, or people's stories are coming full circle, which I really, which really like. Azarello crams so much in and so many characters in in this issue. It is amazing. Um, I also really liked the art by Cliff Chang. He just really suits the book. And the last page, just like, wow, um, it was awesome. We've still got this overriding question of how they're going to stop the firstborn. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that's going to work out, especially with what shows up on the last page. That looked cool. Um, but yeah, this was really, really good. Makes me even more sad that Azarello's run's coming to an end, but it definitely looks like it's going out with a massive bang. And I give Wonder Woman issue number 34, five stars out of five. So now we move on to Green Arrow, issue number 35, and this is the start of the new creative team. Uh, the writers on this book are the two writers from the TV show Arrow, so it was really interesting to see how they would adapt their writing to comic books. Um, I like the introduction of this character, Mr. King. I thought he, he was really interesting. Not least because you've got King and you've got Queen. So I, I, I liked, I don't know, I had imagined that would be intentional, but I, I liked that. Uh, he's looking for someone and he seems to be going to extreme lengths to find them so I found that interesting and intriguing and I'm hoping to find more about him. Um, I was a bit upset about the breakup of our team Arrow. Uh, we've really got to know our characters Amiko and Naomi particularly really well and in the Future's End book it really showed that, that they were still going to play a big part in his life even five years in the future yet now this issue they're kind of written out without even seeing them. And I felt really sad. For, that really upset me. Um, that breakup, and it felt like they want to bring, they want to set this book up so it's more like the TV show, which I can see good things and there's bad things about that. And one of the bad things is losing really good characters like Naomi and Emiko, uh, which I'm hoping at some point they'll return. Um, there's a great scene in here with Oliver Queen meeting up with Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor as they want him to come into business with them. And there's a real kind of like subtext, and you're not quite sure. Do Batman, do Bruce, sorry, Bruce Wayne and Ali know each other, uh, that they're both superheroes? Because there's some dialogue here that kind of suggests maybe they do, and they're like playing a bit here. I don't know, but it was an interesting scene, and it was really cool as well, because this is one of the advantages. When they do the TV show, they've got, there's certain characters they can't, look, can't use here you know they've got pretty much car blanche and i think that works and that scene just worked really well and i really enjoyed it um the ollie in here is a lot more like the tv version which is understandable because of who it's written by than previous issues um the end i felt was ruined um by the cover because you can see the character who turns up at the end on the cover so it wasn't really a surprise and it seems further evidence that they're going to move towards having the team from the TV show be the team in the book even though they might come together in a slightly different way uh, the art I liked I thought the art worked really well and was really good however we've been spoiled with Sorrentino and after having Sorrentino's very stylized art the art this issue felt very much I don't know if generic's the right word, but it felt just like any other DC book. It didn't feel special like it did before. So I would 
so yeah that that for me you know hurt the book but the art wasn't bad by any means but all in all i enjoyed this first issue of their new run and um, curious to see where it's going to go and i give green arrow issue number 35 four stars out of five so now moving right along to justice league issue number 34 and i went into this book not that excited about the book um the art I felt in here was a real mix because there were scenes where I felt the art was really good. You know, like you take this page here of The Flash, I thought that was really good. But then there's other pages where the art didn't look as good or at least the detail on the characters didn't look as good. Um, I liked how the story was top, uh, top and tailed with um, Co Captain Cold and Lex Luthor and a bit of a twist about why they're in the Justice League. I really like that. Um, there was interesting scenes between Luthor and the Trinity. I didn't think, for me, the Bruce Wayne and Superman scenes worked. Bruce Wayne's kind of going on like Luthor knows he's Batman, but I thought, like, from last issue, he was still denying that. It now all of a sudden it's like common knowledge um, and also the way they were talking to Lufa, they were kind of talking down to him and were quite aggressive and it's understandable like because of who Lufa is but at the same time I wouldn't have I wouldn't have reacted positively to the way they were talking so somebody like Lufa isn't going to react positively either I thought Wonder Woman's approach was a lot better and I found that scene much more interesting than the scenes with Lufa and the other two members of the Trinity for me, the highlight of this whole book was the scenes between the Flash and Power Ring, as he's trying to help her control the ring and not have the ring control her. And those scenes I found really, really interesting and were really great fun. Um, and I, I, that, I feel this issue, particularly with the scenes with Luffy and Cold Twists, as well as those scenes between Flash and Power Ring, I think it made the book interesting again. And even though it was a slower issue, it, it made it got the book back on track. And I'm hoping that they're going to stay on the right track now. And I give Just League issue number 34, four stars out of five. So now we move along to Swamp Thing, issue number 35. One of the super consistent books out there. And again, it's, it's no surprise, it's another great issue. Uh, Charles Soul just continues with great writing, and I really like the story mm. that he's got going here. We've got um, this new kingdom, Calculus, and the machines of, of can't coming into their own consciousness. So, like, you've got the red are for like living creatures, the green are for plants, um, you've, and then you've got like the grey and the rot. You now got this new element for machines, and they approach Swamp Thing. They want to run the green. He can stay the Avatar, they don't really care about that. But they run systems, and they see the system of the Green could run more efficiently, and they could do it more efficiently. And so Swamp Thing goes for advice from Jonah what to do when a new kingdom comes up. And he's like, destroy them, that every time a new kingdom comes up, it, it ends in war, and almost mass extinction. You need to take them out now, before that happens. And so, so like... Alex Allen, the Swamp Thing, has this really impossible choice to make. Does he wipe out a potential race, uh, a, a kingdom, uh, in the, the, the to, to try and serve the greater good? Or, or does he let them develop and then if they become a threat, take them out when it might be too late? And it really brings up this real ethical dilemma that I really loved and really got you thinking after you'd read the book, which I really liked. Um, and, and that that for me just continued why this book continues to be so excellent the art as well by jesus says um i just loved uh throughout the issue his art is just tremendous uh, there's this one scene where he's kind of like the, the swamp thing superman super swamp thing uh but yeah i just really loved this issue um and they just keep going and keep being so great and consistent and if this is just the first taste of this new story arc i'm really looking forward to it and i give swamp thing issue number 35 five stars out of five so moving on now to gotham academy issue number one uh, originally i wasn't going to buy this book uh, i kind of was worried it was going to end up being like uh, beverly hills 90210 in Gotham and I didn't really want to read that but then I heard some people 
that I, whose opinion I respect, they said it was good, so I decided, because I'm on a kick of all things Batman at the moment, I'd try Gotham Academy, and I'm glad I did, I ended up really enjoying it, and for me this was the surprise of the week, because it just really blew me away, um, straight away, the our main character, Olive Silverlock, I instantly kind of took to her character, and, and really liked her character, as well as Maps, who's kind of the girl that she's got to look after in this school, because the second year students have to take one of the first year students under their ring, wing, and kind of act as a nanny to them. Um, there's a lot of mystery going on here about the building, there's this one part of the building they're not allowed in, you've also got, you know, um, there's mystery about Olive, that, that there's something that's going on with her, uh, and like the mystery of why she was given this scholarship from Wayne and from Bruce Wayne so you've got all that kind of mystery uh, but then you've also got you learn a bit about the past of Gotham but the thing that was most interesting is seeing Gotham through somebody else's eyes that usually we see Gotham through either the eyes of the criminals through Batman or the Bat family or through the police it's an, I can't ever remember a time when we've seen it through the eyes of the average person and here we get to see the, through these eyes of the teenagers of Gotham we get to see how they view the bat signal how they view Batman and all the crazy stuff that goes on in Gotham and that was something that I also found really interesting the art has a kind of cartoony quality to it but I think it works for the book um, and, and just fits really nice um, somebody I uh, I know they describe the book of having a vertigo feel I don't read enough vertigo to be able to comment on that but it certainly feels different from any other DC book on the shelves right now um, I really enjoyed this book and I'm really looking forward to the next issue to see where the story goes and if they build upon these mysteries uh, but this was a really great first issue and I'm I, I actually got really excited about a book that I thought I wouldn't like and so Gotham Academy issue number one is my pick of the week. So now we move on to Grayson and we have issue number three and this is like I'm still quite new to the character of Dick Grayson. I The most I read of him was when he was Batman and I really liked him as Batman and he brings a lot of those qualities that made him a good Batman it brings into this book. Um, you get to see him, he's a really really good dude he's a badass he can take care of himself but there's a streak of compassion that, and kindness that runs through him and like yeah if you you cross the line he'll take you down but you know he'll try and give you the the way out if he can um in this issue as we have a sort of story structure that we kind of follow every issue now that i really like where we have the overarching mission that nick dick grayson is there to find out what's what this organization um, spy will know about the identities of the superheroes but then at the same time we each issue has a kind of like standalone mission this mission they need to bring in this guy called old gun and he he has stolen these eyes and they need to get them back so so Dick Grayson agent 37 has to team up with matron as well as agents 1 and 8 um, what I liked is there was a real nice twist, not just with our main character, Old Gun, who I really liked his backstory, but also, you know, with the whole, how the whole thing goes down, there's a really nice twist and a real tragic ending that I never saw coming, and it really, like, shocked me and took me back, um, I was like, whoa, um, and it really caused a serious edge to the book, uh, at the, I thought, I liked the conclusion with the whole, that spiral could be catching on, to, to Grayson um, and, and just the whole story of the book I just really enjoyed um, art wise the book is gorgeous Mikhail Yanin is a genius and I just love 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 his art um, all in all this was another really good issue that I, and I'm really enjoying the book and I'm really enjoying the character and I give Grayson issue number three five stars out of five so moving right along now uh, to our final DC book it is Batman Detective Comics or should that just be Detective Comics but either way it's issue 35 and this is a very different Batman story it has um, base it's a kind of almost a terrorist story as this plane's brought down and then there's the twist with why the plane was brought down that leads us on to our neck uh, next part of the story and what I really like is, is the double meaning in the title it's called Terminal 
and you might think because there's a plane it means like there's a plane terminal and they think it like that but then at the same time when you get to the end you understand when somebody's got a terminal disease it means they're going to die and when you get to the end and you realize what's on the plane the whole terminal thing takes on a different meaning so i really like the title uh, the art here works really well with the story and i think work i think complements it nicely and and the conclusion just like i was like whoa um i'm really interested to see how they're going to include this um a re enjoyable first part um, and and to a very different batman story but i like the bravery of, of attempting something different and i'd give batman detective comics issue 35 four stars out of five so now we move on to our independent titles starting up with image two books from image the first of which is alex and ada issue number nine um i'm really amazed at how in nine issues i've come to really care so much about alex and ada mm -hmm. and in this issue when you see them in trouble it really really you know you really like oh no please help them be okay you know you really have got invested in these characters so so much um it's a book that has kind of taken the place of saga for me saga used to be the book that i'd sit down to read and, it, and i'd be enveloped in a saga world and i would just be reading saga and that would be it the rest of the world would just fade away but but now it's Alex and Ada that has that effect as I just become completely engrossed in the story. It really feels like it's amping up and I like the kind of twist at the end as where we think Ada's going and where she ends up. So I liked that. Um, a kind of a double twist if you will. But this book just continues to be great. It looks gorgeous and I give Alex and Ada issue number 9 5 stars out of 5. So moving right along now to Nightworld issue number 3. Uh, this was another really great issue. I like that this issue we learn a little bit more about Helena and we learn there's a nice twist with her what she's up to and a real good interesting twist with her character and I like how they're kind of spacing the origins the characters out so each issue we have a different origin. I also like the way that they drew um, her origin because they work it into the story that she's going through this book um, and that the book kind of shows is magic and it will show your life and so like her origin story is written into these pages which i really like that structure and i thought it worked really well separating it from the regular artwork uh, the book has a real look and real real look and feel of a retro -y kind of book uh, which i think really add to it we get to see palonio and hotshot kick ass which was awesome but like i said there was a, a great twist with mm -hmm. helena as well it's a really great fun book that I'm really enjoying and I give Nightworld issue number 3 a 5 stars out of 5 and I'm really looking forward to see how they're going to end this one up. Final independent this week from Titan is Doctor Who The 11 Adventures of the 11th Doctor issue number 3. Um, I'm really enjoying this and I continue to enjoy this. Once again the structure of the book is very much like the TV show where we get this light bit at the beginning that kind of starts our story off we then have kind of like what would be the credits and then we get to the beginning of our story uh, which i really like really liking the companion and how capable she is and how relatable she is and how much she feels like a regular person thrown into this extraordinary world uh, we get the, the thing here as well at the, in the teaser at the beginning that the doctor has been possessed that was really cool and to see for once the doctor is the one in peril I liked that, that kind of wrinkle in the story, uh, I really liked. We introduced this new character, Jones, who's really interesting and has interesting abilities. And overall, I just really love in this book. And if you're a fan of Doctor Who, pick this up because it's a really great book. They've really got the voice of the 11th Doctor down well. And it's a really interesting story. And I give Doctor Who, 11th Doctor Adventures, issue number 3, 5 stars out of 5. So now we move on to Marvel. And we kick it off with one of the big books of the week, Death of Wolverine, issue number three. Um, I'm just really enjoying this. I'm enjoying how Wolverine's written, that they make him vulnerable, but at the same time he's still badass. And I like that balance that Charles Soule has got. He also seems to have totally got the voice of the character, and that's really great. 
Last issue we saw Kitty Pride turn up. We get a nice twist with Kitty here that makes total sense of what's gone on before, and I liked that. I thought that was good. The art in here is just beautiful. Um, I'm trying to find the one scene in particular that I really liked. Cause there is a really badass. Oh, here it is. This real big scene here. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that because the light isn't the greatest in here. But yet yeah, the art in here, and there's a scene when they first get to Japan, uh, which I really love as well. Uh, Stephen McNiven is just on top form here. Uh, we, we're doing a really, really great book. And uh, yeah, I'm just really enjoying it. They're taking Wolverine out in a blaze of glory, and I'm loving it. And I give Death of Wolverine issue number three, five stars out of five. So moving right on now to Black Widow issue number 11. Uh, this continues the story from last issue as uh, Black Widow's lawyer has been kidnapped by a former associate of hers. And there's this shadowy organization called Chaos that she's getting too close to and they're trying to scare her off. Uh, Black Widow teams up with X-23 to rescue Isaiah, her lawyer. And what I loved the team up with Widow and X-23. And, and I, I like the dynamic and the relationship there. And I would love to see more of X-23 in this book. I love her character anyway. Uh, but her, the, the, the way her and Black Widow work, uh, it was really great. The art is just beautiful. And they make um, the, the, the pair of Black Widow and um, X-23 really beautiful. But not in a sexualized way. Just in a way that you'd go to an art gallery or you'd see something beautiful. And you say, oh, that's beautiful. In that kind of way. And I, I really am loving the art in this book. Um, love the overarching story with chaos. And it is kind of going now where you get in the field that they kind of are predicting stuff. It has not having that um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. feel with the clairvoyant. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where that's going to go. But all in all, this was another really strong issue of Black Widow. And I'd give it 5 stars out of 5. So now we move on to one of the books I was looking forward to most this week. It is Bucky Barnes, The Winter Soldier, issue number one. I liked where... Um, original sin left off with Bucky I thought that was really interesting and um, uh, him being the man on the wall to protect the earth um, so I liked I like <coughs> oh pardon me so I liked that setup the story setup coming into this we're introducing this issue to the Daisy Johnson who's a former associate of Nick Fury worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. now on the run and he brings in because he knew Fury trusted her and he makes her part, part of all this. So I like that and I like the scenes between those two characters. I thought they worked well. Um, we have this kind of space base by Mars they go to for something to eat that I was a bit like, okay. So there's this base where aliens go to by Mars. I was like, okay, I've never heard of this before and it just seemed a bit, mm, you know... We've got space bases in our solar system now. It's like, why aren't more people, more human beings going into space then? Uh, hmm. That that I and also there's this thing where Winter Soldier is like, oh, we're gonna have to wipe this guy's memory or kill them because they've seen me and I'm supposed to be dead. Yet he's turning, he's part of the invaders. He turned up in Original Sin and how many people saw him? So I'm kind of like, is it that big of a secret anymore that Winter Soldier's alive? I don't know. But the biggest problem for me, and I found this real problematic, was the art. Now, you flick through the book, and the art is beautiful. And, you know, this is where I had difficulty with the art, because the art does look nice. But the art doesn't work, because the art is supposed to be there to tell, help tell the story. You look at all the best books out there at the moment, and they have the team of a great artist working with a great writer. And it's that team up when they get it just right. That's what makes a great book. You can't have a great book without one of those two factors being on fire. You look, go back to Daredevil and that issue where Foggy finds out that he's got cancer. And that last page, I think there was like one box of dialogue. The rest of it was all just the story told through the pictures, through the art. And Chris Samney drew that book and conveyed so much emotion in those scenes. And told the story and it had even more impact than however much writing you could have put on it couldn't have had as much impact as he got. In this book, the art hurts the story. I found most of it really difficult to follow. 
especially the last few pages were just to me practically unintelligible I didn't have a clue what was going on and that's a problem because the art's supposed to help the story not hinder it and so like because of that I felt it really hurt the book and while the art looks stylized and looked nice it doesn't work and 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 that for me was the big issue with this and when the first issue and you're trying to get your head around stuff the last thing is you need is, is you know um, confusing art I've got faith in the book I've got faith in the character that it will be get better uh, if they can get the art sorted and I would give Bucky Barnes Winter Soldier issue number one three stars out of five next up we have Captain America issue number 25 and this was pretty much a celebration of Sam Wilson as it really built up why he's going to become Captain America and why Sam is the man. Um, the, the scene where they reveal that he's Captain America, I really liked. Um, he, Captain America, Steve Rogers has got all the Avengers there and he reveals his new role, which I really like. He's kind of be kind of like Oracle was back in the pre-New 52. And he's going to kind of lead the missions from like Avengers Mansion. So I like that. But th this scene here where we get revealed the new Captain America. And the dialogue there that um, Rick Mendes put in. He goes, you guys all knew it was me, didn't you? There's literally no drama left in this reveal. Uh, which like he's talking to all the characters. But it's kind of like he's talking to the audience as well. Because of like the big announcement. So we knew who he was going to be. So yeah, I like I really like that bit of humour in there. Uh, but I, 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 I really like so much about this book. The only thing I didn't like was Jet Black. The conclusion to the Jet Black story. Uh, it just found totally out of the blue. That oh she's a traitor. And there's no evidence. And suddenly everybody's kind of turned on her. I felt really sorry for Jet Black, and you can see, you know, it's it, it is um, it is Zola manipulating everything. But you know, everybody gets so wrapped up in it, and I just felt really sad and I found an unsatisfactory conclusion for her character. I like the epilogue, and it built my excitement for what's to come with the all new Captain America, and it's the first time that I've really been excited about it and looking forward to it. So I think this book worked really well there in that fact that they ended the current series but also built towards the new series the art is great i like that they had the main book is done by carlos pachenko but the epilogue is done by stuart imminent who's going to be drawing um all new captain america so i like that i thought that was really good how they did that um all in all this was just a really really good last issue and i give captain america issue number 25 four stars out of five so next up is the next book that really surprised me this week um, after Gotham Academy. This was the book that surprised me the most. It is Fantastic Four Annual, issue number one. Um, I don't know like what it is, but I have this thing in my head, a negative kind of thing when I think of annuals. I kind of think, well, what's going on, you know, with the annuals? And I kind of have this whole negative thing. Um, but this was a pleasant, pleasant surprise. It continues the story from our regular, from the regular Fantastic Four book. Um, as Sue Storm has gone to get her daughter back, or Sue Richards, sorry, has gone to get her daughter back, who's been living with Doctor Doom. I really like the change in Doom brought about by having Valeria there and um, positive changes and taking his character in a slightly different direction. I really like that and the interplay between the two characters as well, because she's this super intelligent child. Um, I really liked that. Um, with Sue Richards, they're kind of teasing that there's something else inside her that's kind of controlling her and making her have these rages. And it's kind of like, is malice returning? That That's the kind of question. But I really liked that part of the story as well. And really intriguing for the ongoing book is that going to be her downfall that she's going to be took over by somebody else. Uh, Char James Robinson has been is on top form in the book. The dialogue between the characters is fantastic. The story is brilliant, and I just really, really enjoyed this. And anyone who's joining uh, Fantastic Four, you need to read this because uh, it's another great piece of the story. And it's the Fantastic Four annual issue number one, five stars out of five. So moving right along now to Spider-Man 2099 issue number four. And this was another really fun issue, and the book's just been really great fun. Love the battle between our Spider-Man of 2099 and the Scorpion, who's got all this like super souped-up technology. 
Um, I thought there was some really great stuff here for for Stone. Um, I forget his first name. Um, I always do. Uh, boo, 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 boo. And you can never find it, can you? When you want to find somebody's name, here it is, Tiberius Stone. How could I forget Tiberius? Uh, but Tiberius Stone, I really liked him in this book, as it shows he's not all bad. So I really liked that, and it, and some some great change with his character. Um, and while the book is fun, for me, it just seems to lack something, and I can't put my finger on what uh, that makes it from a makes it go from a good book to a great book. But it's still a lot of fun enjoying it, and I'd give Spider-Man 2099 issue number four four stars out of five. So now we're on to Edge of Spider-Verse issue number four. Uh, this issue I it was a really interesting twist, as it kind of shows that not everybody who gets the spider power is a good person. Um, I really like that horror the horror vibe. That was a cool twist to the story. Um, I that I really liked and worked really well. The art as well, I thought, really complemented the story nicely. The only downside to the whole story that I disliked was the point. Um, it, it didn't look like any of the characters are going to play a bigger part in the whole Spider-Verse story. So, what again, what was the point? Maybe they're going to make me look like a fool and, and the last two issues are going to be tied in somehow to the longer term story. But at the moment, it just felt like we've had two issues now where it was like, it doesn't seem like it's linking up to the bigger story. Uh, but other than that, I really liked this. I thought it was a really interesting one-shot. And to give Edge of Spider-Verse issue number four, four stars out of five. So next up, we're moving on now. And we have Guardians 3000 issue number one. And I really ended up liking this. The beginning of the book's a bit confusing because the language that they use, they're using words that, on, and the structure of the sentences are for the way that they would speak in the future. And initially that can be confusing, especially when you're trying to get your head around the story as well. It can be a bit confusing. But as the book goes on and you get used to the way that they talk, things start making more sense. And by the end of the book, and we get a real nice twist with the story and this kind of time loop, um, a real nice twist that makes makes everything make sense and really got me interested and intrigued in the book. Um, I thought it was a great introduction for the characters and even like halfway through it, I even having trouble kind of understanding the language, I still really liked the characters that we were in, been introduced to. Um, so yeah, I, I thought this was a really solid first issue. Like I say, it gets a bit confusing in the beginning, but once you stick with it, you're rewarded at the end with a great twist. And I give Guardians 3000, issue number one, four stars out of five. So now we move on. Just three books to go. We're nearly there. Uh, next up, we have Legendary Star-Lord, issue number four. This was a bit of a letdown. Issue three was the best issue of the series yet. And I'd really enjoyed that. I'm really excited where this series was going to go. This issue is a letdown. The, what we get of Thanos versus Star Lord is a really good fight, and it really seems like Star Lord's fought this out and planned well for this. The fight kind of ends disappointingly, and kind of you left asking, well, what was the point of the last few issues of him getting the things he needed together if he this is how it was going to end? Um, so yeah, it ends a bit disappointingly. The whole fight thing. They also, they kind of keep go going back to what happened in the Cancerverse and this truce. And we haven't seen the final issue of the original Sintai into Guardians of the Galaxy where we're finding out what happened in the Cancerverse. And I think this will probably read a lot more satisfying once we know what happened because it seems to keep going back and teasing that. But it's something we don't know what happened yet, so we can't really get the relevance of that. Um, so it's something I think we'll read better later on. Uh, but for right now, I was really disappointed with this. And I give Legendary Star Lord issue number four, two stars out of five. So the Panorama book this week is Uncanny Avengers issue number 25. We continue our road to Axis, and this was another really strong issue. Great to see Daniel Acuna on art and colors and inks, and he does a great, great job as always. Makes the book look great. I liked a lot of the in the monologue from Scarlet Witch kind of exploring her relationship with her father and her feelings towards her father and I really liked that and it, you know I thought it was a great insight into those two characters 
Uh, there's some great battles in here as they as the as Magneto, Havoc, Rogue, and Scarlet Witch try to take down Red Skull and his S Men. And I really like the end, and it really built. Like I was already excited about Axis, but it really built my excitement up even more. And was just a fantastic end. And as me waiting for next week to get that first issue of Axis. Uh, but yeah, this was a great build to it, and if you're going to get access, this is really worth getting issue 25 of Uncanny Avengers, because it really builds up to it nicely, and I give this book 5 stars out of 5. So yes, we've made it, it's been like nearly 40 minutes, well, it probably will be 40 minutes when I put my beginning on, so, and we've got to the end, it is for issue number 1, and this was a really strong beginning for the title. Um... I like the interplay between Odin and Freya. Uh, it felt like they were a married couple, which they are. And, it, you know, it, it was a dialogue that all of us husbands would recognise. Um, I like the tease um, that we don't get to see who is the new four yet, but we get a really strong tease into who it is. Um, so I liked that, and I liked the whole thing about nobody was wor else was worthy of carrying the hammer. Even Odin tries to pick up Molnir, and it won't work for him. Uh, Thor really gone through some hard times and things just get even worse for Thor in here um, and I'm really interested in where Jason Aaron's taking him as a character and the effects it's going to have on him short term and long term um, while I was sad to see Isad Ribic leave the book I feel the art change in this worked really well because we're on a different phase of the story now and it's not that kind of where before we had this kind of mythical adventure going on now it's kind of a different phase and I feel the art works for this phase of the story. Love seeing Malkia from the Frost Giants, that was really cool and I'm interested into where that's going. Um, and my only gripe was the return of Odin, that we never got to see him return to, to Asgard and to see people's reaction to his return. He's just kind of there and I can understand why because the last story of this, uh, the last days of Midgard, that would have finished then you'd have had original sin where in the middle of original sin would have issue number five would have between issue five and six you would have had uh four and loki the tenth round where odin returned and then issue eight four becomes unworthy and loses molnir and now this fits in after that so there was never a time because this story is carrying on from there and and last days of Midgard ended somewhere earlier we never got to see that unless it's in Loki Age of Asgard which I don't read we never got to see that and what I was initially disappointed but thinking my way through it it makes sense why we didn't get to see it it would have felt tacked on if they'd have put it in but it still would have been something I would have liked to see though I understand it wouldn't have worked uh, but like I say this is a really strong beginning for the series and I'm looking forward to seeing where they're going to go with all the characters and I give four issue number one five stars out of five so we've done it yes we've got to the end uh, I'm going to make this quick because it's already long enough like I said if you like the new format of the way I lay the books out please let me know or if you didn't like it and like the old way better please let me know in the, the comments below if you disagree with anything I say or you agree and you, you, you want to have your say comments below uh, if you like the video please give me those beautiful thumbs up let you me know you like what you're you're watching um, I will be back or been right next Wednesday with my haul video um, a smaller week next week thank the Lord uh, only 11 books so that should be good um, a nice short week after a big week is nice it gives you that extra bit of time to do other things um, but yeah, I will be back then, then next weekend with another review video. Uh, hope you've all had a great week and you've enjoyed the comics. I've been Jason, these have been my comic book reviews. Bye for now. <laughs>